This is the Authentic Kit Mounting System version 1. You've got this rock solid desk clamp and mounting pole and the 27mm aluminium tube mounted to that pole takes these arm grips and quick release plates. Now it's very versatile. The arm grips move side to side so you get horizontal positioning of controls and you can adjust vertical height with different lengths of arm grip. However, I've never been truly happy with it. I don't mean the clamp or the mounting pole, they're great, but the aluminium tube has some shortcomings. Firstly, however much you tighten up those arm grips, there's still a potential for them to rotate around. And they are 3D printed, the jaws are 3D printed. I recommend that you print in 100% infill, but even then, they're gonna give and potentially crack. Now for a while, for a long time, I was trying to come up with a solution that gives some steel reinforcement to that, but I never really did. So the only thing you could do would be to print in PETG or maybe even polycarbonate, and that sort of thing's a bit beyond most people. And thirdly, the aluminium pole is mounted to the tube with two 3D printed parts which are bolted together, these two parts here. And however much you tighten those, you still get this sort of sag and wobble. They just give over time. And it's something that gets a little bit more pronounced if you're on a more, if you're on a more substantial part such as the P51 pedestal. Finally, the pole length itself. It is fixed, so if you want a little bit more, just maybe a couple of inches, yeah, there's nothing you can do. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you a new solution that solves all these problems. It's super sturdy, and of course, highly affordable. Authenticate is a freeware project we're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. This is the Authenticate mounting system version two. We're basically mounting directly to the arm sections of the monitor stand or to additional arm sections that you can buy separately. They often come like this with two arm sections and then the clamp to the pull, which in this case doesn't have an Allen key. You've got this very handy lever, which makes for quick adjustment and movement and this particular one's also got a ratchet on it, so you can easily move the lever to a position which can give you just a really good angle for a good old heave. So it goes on like this, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is strength, because it feels pretty, there we go, feels pretty strong, um, but how strong is it? That's one, that's two, that's three, pretty strong. Okay, how about that rotation issue? Well, if we put on something like the Mustang throttle with a nice big lever and plenty of leverage on it, let's see if we, no, we're not getting any give at all. There's a little bit of give in the lever itself, that 3D printed lever, but the unit and the control mount, they're not budging an inch. Now, lengthwise, they're slightly shorter than the pole, which would come out to about here, but each of the arm sections looks like this. You get a hole in one end, and then you get the jaws and a bolt in the other. So you can chain as many of these as you can get your hands on, or as many as you want. But if you just need a few more inches of length, you don't need to buy another arm section. Just 3D print a piece like that, and fit it into the final jaw, and you've got. Just clamp it down with the Allen key that they provide when you buy these monitor stands, and you are good to go. Price-wise, really affordable. You're looking at typically under £25, $28 or so in the US. So if you want to start using the new system, you will need two things. You need the metal hardware, these pieces here, and you need the 3D printed parts. I'll talk more about the metal hardware in a second. That was the hardest thing about developing this solution. There's a good supplier in the UK of all the bits individually, but finding an option throughout the world, that was tricky but we got there in the end. Then you need these control mounts, so they replace the arm grips. They're actually much simpler than the old system. They're just these two parts that screw together, 
with 10 mil screws and they're very rigid, they're sturdy and they mount the controls very closely to the arm so there's a lot less give. So I'll just fasten these together now. You can see that one of them says top on it. I'll show you why that is in a second. And this is how they go on. Now to save moving the camera around, just being a bit lazy here, I'll put this on the opposite way around and then you can see what I'm doing. So the jaws at this side, they're a little bit narrower than the cross section of the arm here. So you just stretch it over, put a little piece underneath and then with your fingers just pull it over the top and clip it on. And it's already quite a tight fit, but you would get a little bit of twist when you heat on it. So drop in a 40 mil long Allen head bolt. This is the same piece that was used in the arm grip for version one. So you've already got some of these and then just tighten it a bit. You don't need a lot because it's already quite tight and that is really rock solid. Okay, I'll just turn this the right way around now. Again, you just force it off and then I will force it on again because we'll use it in a second to demonstrate some things. Okay, and that is basically all you need. However, there's an optional piece which you, which you may or may not need and I call it the arm lock. And the reason you may need the arm lock, going back to the jaws, these are sheet steel and you can really tighten down with the Allen key and grip the next piece of the pole with it very, very securely. However, even though there's an Allen key bolt underneath here to tighten onto this end, this is cast aluminium. And what I find is that however much you tighten on it, it just doesn't have the flex. And I never really, I've already heaved on that and I can't really get it to fix rigid. Now other designs use steel here and you may do better than that. But to get this one rock solid, I've made the arm lock and it goes on like this. It's two pieces that look pretty symmetrical, although one's got screw holes just on one side and one's got screw holes on both sides. So put it on like that. This goes over the cross section of the arm and this one on the other side and the one with the four holes on this side facing you, we put in two more of those bolts. So that's the Allen head bolts. and then some 50 mil long M4 screws. Now I'll just show you that the length of the screws is such that you will get about one or two mil poking out the far side and that gives you the opportunity to put some nuts on the end to really tighten up and get an extra bit of strength. I find I don't tend to need them. I think possibly after several months and years um, the PLA may soften and putting the nuts on the end will be good. It'll give it extra strength but I've not hit that yet. So. I'll just tighten these up now. When you tighten the Allen bolts, you kind of know that you're there. Um, as in, they tighten and then they stop tightening. You, you know, they pretty much lock on. Whereas the M4 screws, they'll just sort of give and you always think you could tighten a bit more, so just don't overdo it. You'll find you can get a really good lock on the arms with a modest amount of tightening. Okay, that'll do. I mean, I could keep tightening there, but it's already very rigid. In fact, you can see, I don't know where it's giving, the whole table's giving but certainly the arm lock's not giving. So that is rock solid now. And the only thing that, just to tidy it up, because I'm not bothered about the extra extension here, just a little piece I made, which tidies up the end a bit. There we go. Okay, let's talk about where you get these add-on arms. But first, we need to take a step back and talk about the monitor stand itself, because that's what this is. If you're brand new to this, this is a monitor stand. And instead of mounting it that way up, as you'd expect to hold a monitor, you mount it that way up. That's all we're doing here. Um, and what you'd expect for a monitor stand is that the arms would have something like that on the end, which they do. We take it off, we don't need it. Now, unlike previously, I am now recommending a very particular specification of monitor stand. It doesn't need to be one particular model, but whatever it is, there are two specifications you need to watch for if you want it to be as strong and as sturdy as I have here, and to be able to fit these mounting brackets. So specification number one, this pole. This is 35 mil, and that's ideally what you want. In the States, that's one and three eighths. Now, it turns out that is pretty much the most common dimension, However, I have seen in the States that one and seven eighths 
is pretty common as well. Now both sizes will work, but you may have trouble sourcing the right kind of arms for the 1 and 7 8 version. In the US I have found arms that fit to the 1 and 7 8 version, but if you get the chance, still go for the 35mm 1 and 3 8 It's just more compatible with everything. For example, I haven't got an arm lock yet that works with something other than the 35mm mount. So where do you get a suitable monitor stand? Well, if you go into the description, you'll find a link. And there's a page in the Authenticate website which will list all the monitor stands which I've found which are compatible. Just quickly now though, if you're in the UK, the model I'd recommend, and it's this one actually, it's the Allcam MDM11S. And in the US, you've got the Mounted MI751 is what it's called from memory. And both of these come with the single arm like this, that's suitable for mounting controls as we've been doing just here that would be on the cockpit sidewall. Um, they would also be suitable for mounting lower down and fixing a flight stick base. But with just a single arm, you can't do both. Okay, let's talk about specification number two. The type of arm I recommend has this cross section. It's square, 30 mil by 30 mil. And I've shown you the jaw and bolt arrangement that allows you to chain these together. Now it might look as though this is a very unique thing and it's just made by one manufacturer. And I thought that at first actually, but after doing a bit of Googling and image reverse searching, I found that it's basically a Chinese design that appears under many different brands and many different models. In fact, if you're struggling to find this in your region, just go to an image of one of these, and I've got a few of them, and do Google image search on it. And you'll probably find more options in your particular region and you just need to look for these distinctive characteristics. The 30 by 30 cross section. There's often a cap like that, so it'll look like that in the pictures. And look for the shape of clamp to the pole that you can see here. Again, I've got a link in the description for suppliers of the arms in different regions. If you're in the UK, it's all cam again. And what's really good about them is they sell separately different lengths of arms and different mountings to the pole. So you can buy three, four, however many pieces you want, very flexible. I've got a link for the US as well, and they sell a piece which comprises two arm sections like that. A mount to the pole will come with one of these that you just take off. Now on the subject of this visa plate, existing Authenticate fans may be a little surprised that we're not using it, because so far it's been a crucial part of the solution. We mount that plate at 45 degrees, low down, between your legs, where you want to fix the flight stick. We fix a quick release dovetail to it, and then we're able to mount our flight stick. However, again, there are some things about that solution that I wasn't happy with. Firstly, this visa plate on some designs, it was pretty rickety, it would sort of rattle around a bit. This one's relatively tight and strong, actually. Secondly, if you've got a bit of tension on that stick, and I know the Spitfire one doesn't have a huge amount, but there's an improved one coming, I assure you. Um, with a bit of tension on it, you've got the ability to rotate. And you don't want that. We don't want that rotation happening. Or even tilting, having the tilt move about. So there's a new solution to that as well. In fact, I've already got it fitted to another arm. So let's move this back up and put it in its cockpit wall, throttle and uh, trim wheels kind of position. And here we have the replacement. It's in orange, you can see it really clearly, can't you? It's basically a 3D printed piece that is fixed at 45 degrees. It goes straight into the jaws of the end arm. You can lock it on really tightly with the Allen key. It obviously won't twist that way, it won't tilt. It's just fixed, rigid, just what you want. And that would go in down here at the lower point. And this will just go slightly off camera, I think, but it'll rotate and position between your legs so that you've got a fixed lower point for the flight stick and then you've got that higher point for your throttle and you've got your sidewall stuff. Now the flight stick mount actually comes in two versions. If you've got three articulated arms then you've got the length to arc them around your left leg and avoid banging into your legs while you've got your feet on the rudder pedals. But if you've only got a couple of lengths of arm then this longer version will be more useful to you. So if you're super keen to get switched over to this new mounting system, there's just one more thing to talk about. 
Because as you know, Authenticate is not just about having replica controls, but it's about having those controls in the right place, relative to you and relative to each other. And so far, the main aircraft that we've got a reasonable set of controls for are the Spitfire and the P-51D Mustang. Let's talk about the P-51 first. So this is how they're meant to be positioned relative to each other, and it's actually pretty difficult to do on a single mounting arm. The offset of the throttle is quite a bit higher than the mounting position would be for the pedestal. You can see we actually need the throttle to be really quite high up, and if we fixed it with a normal mounting control, it would be down here. Now, if you're happy with a good enough solution, what I've made is another mounting control, but with a 200 mil riser, and that is about the limit of what you can print on a typical 3D printer. So if I fix that here now, so if I slot the throttle onto that, we're almost there on the vertical offset. We're just about 15 mil too low. And what you'll also find as well is that the throttle is just slightly further away, further back from the back of the pedestal than it ought to be. But again, it's, it's pretty close. So those are just some small compromises, I think. The main issue I've got with this is the flex, because that riser, I've beefed it up, I've made it as strong as I can, but you still get this sort of twisting action, this kind of flex. Um, it's, you know, it's okay, it's not brilliant. The best solution would be to do away with that, to get a second arm at a higher level, we can lower this really quite low because it does mount pretty low the pedestal and have a second arm up here and then mount one of the smaller more direct control mounts to it. It only needs to be probably one arm section rather than two arm sections and then you could mount it very strongly to that higher level arm. Now for the Spitfire this is the configuration you're looking for but at present I don't have a solution that has three different control mounts at the three different heights for the three different controls. And in fact, I don't intend to make one because I'm working on this. This unit already has the correct vertical displacement between the elevator trim and the rudder trim, the correct horizontal displacement, and with these two mounting points fixed to this arm, the relative heights of these to the throttle are bang on as well. So all you need to do then is make sure the separation between these two points, the elevator trim and the friction on the throttle is 19 centimeters, and you've got that perfect. So it's not quite finished, it is almost there, but before I release it, I want to have a place underneath, an optional add-on for those switches that, you, that go underneath, the, the fuel switch being a critical one. So if you're flying the Spitfire, you may want to wait a few weeks before switching over, or you may want to source the arms now and be ready for when I release this unit. Okay folks, that's all I've got time for now. I hope you like this upgrade to the mounting system. And do check out the links below in the description for where you can source the monitor stand and the arms. And if you're struggling, put a question in the notes below or join our Discord and talk to other folks in the community. And if you do find sources which I haven't found, please do share them with me. Put them in the notes below, please, or join our Discord again, and I can add them to the list and share them with other people. And remember, subscribe, because if you want to be the first to hear about this upgraded elevator and rudder trim wheel combination or any other authenticate controls because there are plenty coming out this year hit the subscribe button and you get to it first bye for now folks